Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Ted Carr here, and if you don't know who I am, I am a 28-year-old raw vegan from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and I'm here now in September in Canada, doing it up, living it up, living the raw food lifestyle. I've been doing this for nine years, over nine years, and uh, most of my friends are raw vegan. Most of my friends are in the lifestyle, and I've pretty much met everyone I know either through YouTube, Instagram, or at a fruit festival or a retreat or a meetup group. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? That's my life, that's, that's the gist. And what do I do for a living? I, uh, I do many things. I organize, I organize stuff. And yet, it's funny because I find myself to be really unorganized at times. And maybe I find myself to be unorganized at times because I got so much stuff to organize. What do I organize? I organize the Canada Fruit Festival. I organize retreats. I organize some meetups. I organize some online Facebook groups. I organize the 30 day raw food challenge. And I organize various facets of, of my own life as I'm sure we all do as well. We all, we all have things behind the scenes. So I've got a lot to organize and maybe that's why I think I'm unorganized at times. Or maybe it's just an excuse for not putting my socks away. I don't know, whatever the case may be, let's get into this video here. Forget all that intro. This video is going to talk about the five problems with fruitarianism. These are the five problems that I face. These are the five same problems that pretty much everyone else I talk to faces. I'm going to see if I can remember them off the top of my head here. The first problem is fruit quality, finding high quality fruit. Now this can definitely be a problem. And I remember my first time being fruitarian. I found out about it. I said, wow, you can live on just fruit. That makes so much sense because every other food I've tried it kind of sucks as far as like making me feel amazing. Like what other food can you eat a massive meal of and feel amazing? There's no other food. You can eat a massive meal of strawberries, feel great. Massive meal of mangoes, feel great. Massive meal of papayas, feel great. In fact, I still to this day eat massive meals of blueberries and feel great. Massive meals of bananas or dates and even avocados and feel fantastic. But you, I can't do that with any other food. I, I can't eat a massive bowl of X, Y, and Z cooked food. I can't eat a massive plate of veggies and feel great. I can't eat a, dear Lord, I can't eat a massive meal of animal products either and feel great. The only meal I can feel great on is a meal of fruit. And I find that to be the same for everyone else I come in contact with. So once I found that out, I said, wow, I'm going to go to the store right now and just blow it up on fruit. So I did. I, I went to the store and I distinctly remember it was very cold in Canada. It was probably December, January. I had a girl over at my house, a girl who I'd met online, Nexopia, nexopia.com. Shout out Nexopia. And uh, she thought I was so weird going to the grocery store and loading up with oranges, loading up with apples, loading up with pears. I remember getting a lot of pears and loading up on grapes, loading up on grapefruit. And I think that was about it. So oranges, pears, apples, and grapefruit for the most part. And I came home, maybe some bananas as well. I just remember feeling so excited. So excited about having all this fresh fruit in the house. And I was eating it and thinking I was so cool and this girl thinking I was so weird. I was like, whatever, she doesn't know. I'm on, I'm on the path. I'm, I'm following nature's design, you know? Living in line with nature's design. Eat all this food and I'm like, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. And uh, I was like, is that it though? Like, why don't I feel, you know, super excited? So I was satiated. I'm like, well, maybe this is just the way it is, you know? Just, just chill, just eat the food. So I ate the food. And, the quality of the fruit was like, all right, I guess. Um, I didn't have much to compare it to because I wasn't a fruitarian at the time. And what I found now, looking back in hindsight, is I had no, I had no reference point to what high quality fruit really was. All I knew was grocery store level fruit. And I think a lot of people out there, they only know grocery level fruit. They've never been to Thailand like I have. They've never lived in Hawaii like I have. They've never lived in Costa Rica. They've never lived in Ecuador. They haven't traveled to Panama. You know, they, they haven't tasted truly, truly tree ripened fruit before. I'm salivating just thinking about it. Unless they're thinking of uh, the Granny Smith apples that they picked off their grandma's tree or whatever, you know? Most people haven't had truly ripe exotic fruit that humans are designed for. But once you've had really, really good fruit and you go to the grocery store and you try that stuff, a lot of it just tastes kind of Ugh, whatever. And so that's a problem with fruitarians now. We, we, we face that problem. We, 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 we travel the world, because we go to these festivals or we go to these retreats, we go to these events, and we eat the fruit in these local countries and we come back home and it's like, meh, it's whatever. So the workaround there to fix this problem, I think the best bet is to go to the bulk warehouse 
and contact them and tell them what you want and they'll order directly from the country that you want to get it from and you buy it bulk from them. That way, you know, you're getting a great price on it and you're getting great quality because it's right from the warehouse. And that's pretty much the best you can get. Unless you're talking summertime. Summertime, you can go to the farmer's market and you get stuff directly from the source. Directly from Joanna who grew it. Directly from George who grew it. You know, go directly to the source. So that's that's the fix right there, I think. Otherwise, you know, you just got to fly out, go to an exotic country and, and, eat, and eat the fruit there. Luckily, here in Canada, at least, I know a few really good shops that, that do get quality stuff in. But... Um, I think that's just because I've been doing this diet and lifestyle for a while and I've, I've sourced out like the best spots, the best aisles, the best times of the year to go to these certain stores. But definitely it's still a problem, quality. The second issue is the cost. It's very expensive to be a fruitarian. I'm not gonna deny that. It, if you compare being fruitarian to being a, a, a standard North American diet eater who can just go to McDonald's or Burger King or KFC, it's, fruitarianism is so much more expensive. And even compared to being a cooked vegan, cooked vegans can just go to the store and buy bulk XYZ cooked food and it lasts them all year long for like 20 bucks. Like it's so cheap. But the vibe is so low on those foods, it's just not worth it to me. Like I can buy really cheap fruit as well, but the vibe is so low. I wanna eat really high quality food, really high vibe food, because I know that the food I eat is gonna become the mood that I experience. High vibe food, high vibe mood. And when I'm buying really cheap and, and low vibe fruit, I'm, I'm feeling that way as well. But when I spend my money, my good hard earned money, not hard earned money, my good easy, enjoyably earned money on fruit that's really high vibe, I eat that, I feel good and high vibe as well. So the workaround to getting the fruit a bit cheaper is to go, again, like I said, go to the warehouse, call them up, or just go there directly and say, hey, can I buy bulk? When you buy bulk, things are cheaper. The other workaround is again, go directly to the source and say, hey, you're the, the guy, you're the lady that grows the food. I almost want to buy directly from you. You can cut out the middleman. And then um, the other way is to buy discounted fruit, like stuff that's like super ripe. Overripe stuff is typically much cheaper and it's actually awesome because it's uh, ready to eat and you can freeze it and juice it and make smoothies, put it in your fridge, whatever. It can make it last a lot longer. Um, the other way is just to, to, again, go fly out to a country and uh, buy it local there. So fly to Thailand where it's really cheap, fly to Ecuador where it's really cheap, fly to Hawaii where papayas are 50 cents each. Like, Go directly to the place where it actually grows. That's the way to get it a bit cheaper. Again, luckily here in Canada, I found places where I can get it cheaper because I, I know the stores, I know the places to go. Now, the third issue, I'm not going to pretend I memorized them all, but um, it's a good, good, good notes down there, man. Good, good job, Ted. Pat on the back. The third issue is this diet and lifestyle doesn't have too many people doing it. There are very, very few people actually doing raw. Now check this out. There are seven, eight, maybe nine billion people on the planet. And fully raw Christina, Ravana, Alice, Johnny Juicer, Dan the Man, Dr. Robert Morris, Life Regenerator, all these all these names in the movement, in the in the vegan and, and raw vegan movement. The people who really like have been promoting raw for a while, all together combined, they maybe have two and a half, three million followers. And a lot of those are probably duplicates. Like the same people who follow Christina also probably follow Ravana and Elise and all these things, right? So there's probably really like two million people on, on the internet, on social media, on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, who follow the big pro promoters of, of raw food. Two million people out of nine, maybe perhaps nine billion. And of those 2 million people, how many people actually show up to a fruit festival and, and, and allow themselves to be seen and to be heard, to actually interact and engage with the community in real life? How many people actually come out and say like, I love this diet and lifestyle so much, I'm actually gonna attend a fruit festival, I'm actually gonna attend a retreat even? Well, historically speaking, we just need to go and look at all the people who've come to Woodstock, look at all the people who've come to the Danish Fresh Food Fest, the UK Fruit Fest, the Canada Fruit Festival, and see how many people have actually showed up, how many individual people have actually showed up. And I've done the math in my head, and it's about 2,000 people. So 2,000 unique people, give or take, have ever actually showed up to a festival. And then how many people actually show up to a raw food retreat? And this is, by the way, in the past like five, six, seven years, right? So 2,000 active people in the community coming to retreats. How many people, or festivals, how many people have actually come to a retreat now? 
a lot less because retreats usually hold a lot less, but I'm going to guess about maybe three, four hundred. Let's say 500 to be generous. So we've got 2,500 people in the whole world attending retreats and festivals. Out of 9 billion people, out of the 2.5 million people who even know about raw food, right? so it's very few people, only thou- a couple thousand people are actually doing it. Around the whole world, the whole globe. The reason I'm saying this is because it's so rare to find someone who's actually eating raw vegan or let alone fruitarian. So when I get someone on the phone, when someone fills out my application to come to my retreat and I, they mark down their diet that they're, they're either eating vegan or raw vegan or they want to be eating raw vegan or whatever, I give them a call and we talk and I find out where they're at, where they want to be at and, and the, what's the game plan for, for getting them there. And then we find out if coming to the retreat is actually a good fit for them. And when I'm talking to these people, I realize, I'm like, wow, this person is so rare. There's so few people like this. And oftentimes I'll let them know that. I'll let them know they're so rare. I cannot find these people just walking down the street. Unless you're in New York after the Woodstock Fruit Festival. You know, it's the only place because everyone's in New York after the Woodstock Fruit Festival. You can see them on the street there. So there are so few people here that there's so few friends you can actually have in the diet and lifestyle. And yet all my friends pretty much for the most part are made up of vegans and raw vegans. I'd say 90% of my friends are raw vegans. 9% are vegan, 1% are childhood friends and family members who I consider friends who don't eat vegan or raw vegan at all. But the issue, what I'm saying is the problem is there's so few people to be friends with, so you can kind of make yourself into a little bit of a loner, a little bit of a hermit. So the fix is to go to fruit festivals, is to go to retreats, is to, is to go to meetup groups locally and actually introduce yourself in real life. I go up there, I say, hey, I'm Ted, nice to meet you. Or I go on stage and I let everyone know, I say, hey, I'm Ted Carr, if you want to Ask me any questions after the, after the talk, after the festival, come up and talk to me. Let's hang out, let's eat some fruit together. So I'll open yourself up. Open yourself up and let people know who you are and what you're about and, uh, and make friends that way. Finding and making friends at festivals is so easy to do. It's so easy to do. You just gotta know how to do it, I guess. You just gotta actually be brave enough to go to a festival and be seen and be heard and let people interact and engage with you. So the other issue with uh, fruitarianism is that the fruit is so light. Eating a fruit diet is very light. It's full of water. It's full of natural sunlight. So when you eat it, you feel high vibe. And that's actually a problem for a lot of people because a lot of people are looking for sedation. They're actually looking to sit back and watch a, watch a movie and just feel sedated. Like, ah. And cooked food does it beautifully. Cooked food sedates people wonderfully. Cooked food just gets the job done. But raw food, raw food will not sedate you unless if it's unless it's like super gourmet or something. Raw food, especially fruit, fruit does not sedate. Fruit elevates. Rather than sedate, it will elevate. And so you actually have to look at yourself in the mirror with clear eye, with clear vision, with a clear state of mind, with pure honesty. And look yourself in the mirror and know that you have to deal with your problems. You can't just sedate them. You can't just brush them under the rug with cooked food. You actually have to sit with the issue or the problem, the thing that you're dealing with, and actually live with it and think about it. You can't just sedate it and pretend it doesn't exist. And that's a problem for a lot of people. A lot of people would rather just watch TV, watch a movie, watch some Netflix, watch some YouTube videos in a sedated state. In fact, a lot of people are probably watching this video. Maybe they haven't made it this far into the video, but a lot of people open this video initially in a sedated state. If you're still watching, I doubt you're sedated. But uh, a lot of people do watch YouTube videos in a sedated state. And I know this because I was one of them. This is what I did. I'm speaking from experience. It's so easy to eat some cooked food and watch a YouTube video and just sit back sedated. But with raw food, you actually have to face your shit. You have to face yourself in the mirror and actually evolve rather than just staying stagnant with where you are. And that, could, like I said, can be a problem with people. So the fix, the, 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 the workaround for that is that Meditation is really an amazing tool. Learning to sit and be with yourself and be comfortable with yourself is really an amazing skill to practice. It feels really good. And you can just give yourself a pat on the back a lot more often. You can be your own best friend a lot more often. You don't need to distract yourself with external stimuli, external, uh, external uh, notifications and messages from people and comments and phone calls with other people and uh, crap on YouTube, crap on TV, crap on the, you know, just crap on the internet in general. 
So whereas I think cooked food for the most part allows you to run away from your problems, not face your problems, raw food, you have to face your problems. Things come up, you can't suppress them, you can't sedate them anymore. So that's, that's an issue for a lot of people. But meditation will really help. Yoga will really help. Fitness will really help. Whatever you can do to naturally put yourself in a great state of mind will really help. Breath work will really help. Cold showers will, will really help. And I, I find this true for myself all the time. If I'm having a hard time, have a, go have a cold shower, I feel freaking amazing after. Whatever that problem was, no problem, I crush it. Whatever that anxiety-ridden worry I had, no problem, it's gone. Especially when, after I leave the gym, or even mid-gym. Lifting weights feels amazing. So, there are always fixes to these problems that I'm bringing up. There's always two sides to a coin. A lot of people leave fruitarianism saying there's too many problems. There's always a solution. If there's a problem, there must be a solution. By law, by nature. Anyways, the fifth problem, the last problem that I want to mention here, is that eating a fruit diet in a cold country, in the cold time of year, sorry, can be cold. Fruit can be cooling. There are certain foods that are very cooling foods. And there are other foods that are a lot more warming. Mangoes, for example, are a warming fruit. When you eat mangoes, right? Mangoes in Thailand, I started sweating. Mangoes are very warming. Whereas on the other hand, uh, cucumbers are very cooling. Watermelon, very cooling. Melons in general, very cooling. So when you eat a fruit diet, you're much more likely to experience being cold, especially if you're taking the fruit right out of the produce aisle where it's kept in the cold, especially if you're taking it out of the fridge or taking it out of the freezer and blending it up making a smoothie, you're going to be really cold. And I found myself just having these cold smoothies in the wintertime and just being so cold, no matter how many layers of clothes I put on it, no matter how many beanies and toques I wear, no matter, even if I sit in a hot tub, I'm sitting in my hot, hot uh, I make a bath for myself because I'm freezing cold, I'm drinking the smoothie and I'm still freezing cold. Even in a bathtub, hot water. So the fix is to not try and warm yourself up from the outside. Although that can help to a degree, no pun intended. That can help to a degree, making sure you know the heat's turned up in the house, you are wearing some warm clothes. The trick to staying warm on a raw food diet is to drink a lot of hot water. That's it, drink a lot of hot water. Because when you warm yourself up from the inside out, it's a game changer. You can, you can drink a hot, hot cup of tea, or just water, hot water, and then go outside in the snow and not be as cold because you're warm from the inside out. The outside doesn't affect you as much. And I remember this too because I was so cold. I had this cold smoothie. I would bundled up so much and I, I'm, I'm still freezing cold. And then I, I start drinking this hot water and I find myself taking off my hoodie, taking off my tube, my beanie, taking off my socks. I'm like, I'm hot now. This, this stuff, this hot water made me hot. It allows you to take off the jacket. So that's really the, the trick to staying warm in a cold climate on a fruit diet is drink a lot of hot water. Of course, there are other things you can do as well. You can do some fitness. That really helps. I recommend it. You can do hot yoga. I really recommend that. You can go to the sauna. I'd really recommend that. Go to the steam room. You can also do breath work. Breath work is an amazing way of warming up. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube for how to do some breath work. And then you can just, you know, like I said, turn the heat up in the house, wear clothes, and just drink a lot of hot water. Another another little thing you could might want to try if you have a dehydrator. If you don't have a dehydrator, check the link in the description. You can get one. You can dehydrate your food in the winter. And when you take it out of the dehydrator, it's really warm. It's like it almost just came out of the oven, but it's raw. So you can eat that stuff, and that's really nice too. So making a warm, making warm din- dinners like that is great. Uh, and then avoiding cold food at all costs. Avoid stuff out of the fridge or freezer unless it's thawed out completely at room temperature. And, uh, you know, just focus on hot, hot water and room temperature foods, fruits. That's it. All right. Hope you got something from this video. If you did, consider joining me on the 30 day raw food challenge where I teach you how to be a raw vegan for 30 days straight. You get a video every day from me in your inbox and you'll learn all the tips and tricks that I learned that it took me freaking nine years to learn. I put them in this course that's just gonna allow you to take everything I know and soak it in, soak it up for 30 days. All right, Link link is in the description. Hope to see you in there. Peace out, much love.